I just wanted to talk about excess deaths and the silence that is being held amongst people I know personally, my former employers, you know, Mail Online, The Sun, Fox News, BBC, and individuals I know personally who would love stories where the headline jumps out, where it's maybe a bit shocking or a bit frightening or it's so obvious it's inescapable. That's a perfect Mail Online headline. And yet, despite all that I know, it's still not being said, which leads you to realise it has to be being silence that's being bought or silence that's being enforced, but something's going on. And in terms of statistics, obviously I don't advocate that anyone listens to one person on these or me or Russell Brand or John or any of the other people you might listen to, but in The Lancet. So I just want to quote a specific publication, uh, the author Jonathan Pearson Stuttered. That's the author, the paper, Excess Mortality in England, so just England, post-COVID-19 pandemic, implications for secondary prevention. But if you go to Lancet, do Excess Mortality, this is by a guy, JPS, Jonathan Pearson Stuttered. So it goes through very clearly, and there are seven data points, which I'd just like to go through um, as they are written but just drawing out the main part of each of the seven points. And the first is, and the first para, that statistically, no matter what your observation method or your mechanism, or group or organisation you belong to, roughly the results are coming up as the same, which is the excess deaths, deaths that are above those which should be expected. And even if you look at five years worth of excess deaths, excess deaths now, deaths that shouldn't be happening, are way higher and inexplicably so. And that's continuous mortality investigation, that's whether you're looking at this Office for National Statistics, wherever. It's basically trying to reach a point of agreement that says something strange is going on with the number of people that are dying off. Um, information point two, causes. It points to a number of causes. And as you might anticipate, none of those causes have been investigated or can be explained. And there is a cause or a suggestion of something that we wouldn't know, the elephant in the room, that's not mentioned. So the Lancet doesn't mention the elephant in the room. Could it be that the mass in in injection with an experimental state injectable could be behind this? That's not mentioned at all. Other things are like poor disease detection and management poorer outcomes, just kind of waffle. But I'm not trying to direct this in any regard. I'm just saying the Lancet says these excess deaths are unexplained. Uh, kind of information point three, the age profiles. The Lancet is making the point that in these deaths that are unexplained, that are excess, that are abnormal, it isn't the elderly. It's younger groups, 25 to 49, and 50 to 64, 50 to 64 years old, 15% higher than expected, 25 to 49 years old. I mean, that's young. I say that because that's what I'm, I'm in that group. 11% higher. So specifically, the data point is young and middle-aged dying off unexpectedly, excessively compared to what would be normal, even in the five years Key causes, so this is the next point it makes, point four, cardiovascular diseases, a relative excess greater than that seen from all causes. Cardiovascular diseases, 12% up, heart failure, 20% up. If you add together all the different heart breakdown categories, they have 47% of these excess deaths related to something to do with heart conditions. Next up, it combines the age thing, the 50 to 64 uh, years old people with the, the ways people are dying. So the age where people are dying at rates that are really inexplicable and the why is heart related. And this is the really shocking part from The Lancet. This is the bit that were I still at Mail Online, this is the obvious pointer. 44% higher. So unexpected deaths, excess deaths from heart conditions. If you're 50 to 64, you are 44 percent, 
44% more dying from heart conditions at the age of 50 to 64. That can't be explained. That no one knows what excess. And then the data point six, the important thing here is the place of death. Now, respectfully, if you're in a hospice, you're there for a reason. And respectfully, if you're in hospital, I'm not saying that you anticipate dying. I'm saying you're there because you are aware that something's wrong. The place of death is in the home, private homes. 22% more deaths than expected in private homes. And you know what that tells you? That tells you that these were people who either didn't know they were ill didn't know something was wrong or had something malevolent going on inside of them that they weren't aware of. So in the very broadish brush, if you excuse my ordinary person interpretation, people that are aged 25 to 49 or 50 to 64 dying at rates unseen. And these are very recent and relevant statistics involving the first half of 2023. This paper was published on the 1st of December, so it can be updated now. But if you pop that on a graph and you're a graph kind of visual person, 2023 excess rate is here. And you'll look and see that for all these years, the rate has been below. The pandemic is taken out of this. So here, this is 1940, back in the war years, pre-war years. Here. This is the recent number. And look at the, the solid nature of this chart. All of it says that there should be a conversation. It doesn't matter if you disregard what I say. It doesn't matter if you're not a fan of Russell Brand. It doesn't matter if you don't like to listen to anyone on our side. This is a conversation. The Lancet is publishing it. And even the guy that's written or is the lead author in this discloses in The Lancet that he receives separately to this work um, monies from personal fees from Pfizer. So even a guy receiving personal fees from Pfizer outside of this work is willing to still publish this because the data is the data or are the data. And I suppose my kind of takeaways from this are, I used to work with the boys that aren't printing this, even when I know it's a real, it sits exactly in the crosshairs of what would have been instantly an article that I would have been writing at Mail Online. So the, the boys in the media have to deliberately avoid or evade talking about this. And for that deliberate act to happen, the authority must have been put upon them to not talk about this. That's odd. More odd than that is that hundreds of thousands of people are dying that is a surprise. It's unexpected. They are excess. And that's excess not just compared to last year or compared to, it's compared to five years they're excess, going back to 1940. And then the other thing, and this is really where I come in, and I think this is really where I bring something that, is not necessarily being brought in other places, which is there are now people out there who are worrying and will be worried and need reassurance. And let's say that it is perfectly possible to explain these deaths, right? Let's say it's due to something, something, oh, because there has been a large you know, case of, of this, let's say it's perfectly possible to explain it, then for God's sake, British Heart Foundation, for God's sake, medical science, please explain it. Because for people who may be looking at the elephant in the room and worried for themselves, they need something. And that's why I always say, it doesn't matter what decisions you made in your past, doesn't matter what you were felt compelled to take or not take, or if you, uh, unrelated, took booster after booster after booster, and now you're genuinely worried. You know, I think it's the job of people like me and others to bring everyone with us, right? It, the, we're looking for answers, not so that people can go, aha, we were right all along. I know there's people doing that. That's not my thing. This is so that everyone can be brought along and we can look after people. And you can't look after people if there's this glaring 
story that no one will talk about, an elephant in the room that no one will talk about. I know from personal experience, you cannot fix a problem unless you're willing to talk about it. And for lots of people, the only way to avoid looking at this is just to not look at it at all, don't talk about it and pretend it's not there. And currently, that's exactly what's happening. And I think it's the responsibility of people who do see these numbers to talk about it in a supportive way that is helpful to people who are now genuinely worried. Um, and I also feel a sense of relief, I think, that I no longer work around, near or in organisations where, and obviously I couldn't stay within them anyway, where you are told what you're allowed to say. Because surely at some point, no matter what the pay packet, surely your moral conscience has to kick in. So that's that. Please do, if you ignore everything else that I just said, please do go to The Lancet. Please look up the article, Excess Mortality in England. And please remember, this is just England. And this is just the first, the last uh, part of 2022 and the, the last, the first six months of 2023. It doesn't look even beyond that. Okay, I'll see you somewhere on the road.